we're certainly facing an interesting economic time, right? We're, uh, things have slowed down. We're looking at a recession in the U.S. Companies are freezing hiring. People are still resigning. And that means a lot of people are probably looking for jobs. So in this episode, I want to talk about how you can engage in the job hunt while you're employed and do this in a safe way so you don't risk your job. I'm Larry Cornett, and this is Invincible Career. So if you want to follow along and read the newsletter version of this, it is How to Job Hunt While You're Employed. This is issue 394. You can go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com and find that at the top. should be pretty easy. So yeah, interesting times. And I've been in this situation many times, uh, looking for a new job while I already had a job. And how do you do that? It's a little tricky. You have to be careful. And it takes me back to a conversation I had with one of my managers <laughs> after the end of the job hunt. I uh, got my resignation letter ready. We had a one-on-one meeting. And I walked in and sat down at the table slid my resignation letter across the table. He took a look and he said, you know, I could fire you. (laughs) Kind of ridiculous. We actually had had a pretty good relationship up until that point. And I stood up and I put my hands on the conference table and I leaned across, I leaned closer to him and I said, oh, really? You're going to fire me. After all I've done for this company, the sacrifices I've made. He sighed and he leaned back in his chair and he said, I'm not going to fire you. I'm just upset that you're quitting. I guess it's because my resignation came as a surprise. I mean, it'd been a good run. I'd had a good time at the company, but I'd done nothing wrong. I had used a couple of vacation days, took some time off so that I could uh, interview with a couple of companies. So I interviewed for a new job at two different companies. The interviews had gone well, and I had two job offers to consider. I hadn't decided which one to accept yet. I was still (laughs) looking at the offers. They both had pros and cons, obviously. But an impending reorg at my company kind of pushed me to accelerate my timing. So I gave my two weeks notice early decided before I'd accepted the new job, I put in my notice and said, okay, I don't want to be a part of this reorg. You know, my experience, even though I did nothing wrong, does highlight you have to be careful. You have to be a little careful when you're looking for a new job while you're still employed. So I put together five do's and five don'ts that I think will help you be more strategic and safe with your job hunt. So I'm going to start with the do's. These are the things you should do. And it's not going to be a comprehensive list, but (laughs) five things. One is define your ideal job. What is your ideal next job? Two, identify your ideal employer. Three, activate your network. Four, be intelligently visible. Five, be selective. So these are the things you should do to safely engage in a job hunt while you're employed. So I'm going to go into each of these in a little more detail and expand on those. Number one, define your ideal job. So you're not going to have a lot of free time on your hands when you're already employed in a full-time job, right? You can't afford to waste your time. You really don't want to waste anyone else's time either by having some kind of vague conversation about what you're looking for with your next opportunity. And I've had that happen. I've had people reach out to me, you know, because they think it's time to look for a new job or they're worried they're going to lose their job. And I say, okay, what are you looking for? And they don't know. They're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. 
haven't really thought about it. It's like, <laughs> okay, you want a new job and you set up some time to talk with me, but you don't know what you want. You don't know what kind of job you want. It's the first thing people are going to say to you, right? So if you start talking with friends and you start kicking the tires on stuff and say, oh, I'm looking for a new job, they're going to say, well, what do you want? So before you dive into a job search or start talking with people in your network or applying for open positions randomly, spend some time capturing what you want most for your next career move. Create a clear answer to the question, what kind of job are you looking for? I mean, it's a very common question. So have an answer for that. It's one of the first things I do when I work with clients. You know, they tell me they're looking for a new job. And so we spend some time saying, what does that look like? What is the perfect job for you? It gives you something to shoot for. It's hard to find the perfect job, but what do you want to do? Describe it in extreme detail. How do you want to spend your days? What do you want to do? What do you not want to do? What are you great at doing? What are you not so great at doing? So trying to understand all of that. The second thing is to identify your ideal employer. So you want to expand on that previous answer of here's my ideal job by doing research into who's your ideal next employer. I mean, the whole idea is trying to minimize the time you're going to spend in these next phases of the job search. I want to help you do that because the longer you're exposed, the more likely someone's going to know you're looking for a job and it does risk your current job. So I want to minimize the time you're going to spend talking with your network, contacting potential employers, applying for jobs, interviewing, all that stuff. This, the shorter we can compress all those phases, the sooner you will receive job offers and reduce that exposure, right? So do you want to stay in the same industry? Do you want to stay in finance or e-commerce or gaming, whatever your your current industry is? Do you want to stay in that? Or are you open to other things? Do you want to work for a similar type of employer? People often do. You know, people who've left eBay will work for Amazon and people that left PayPal will go work for Stripe and stay in payments. Do you want to do that? Do you want to work for a startup or a small company or a larger corporation? And there are a lot of details because if you say startup, people are going to say, well, what kind of startup? Pre-seed, seed, series A, series D. Do you want a profitable startup, a tiny startup, a large startup? What are you looking for? Does the employer, your future employer, need to be based where you live? Is that important? Is that necessary? Depends on what you do, right? So do you need someone within a reasonable commute distance if you're going to have to go into the office? Would you be willing to relocate? Big question. Are you willing to move somewhere else to take a job? Another big one now... (laughs) Are you open to a remote role? Would you be willing to work for a company that could be based anywhere and you could live anywhere? Some people love that. I'm a big fan of that. Some people, for some reason, want to go back into the office. So create a clear definition of your ideal employer. Almost like you're building a persona. The same as you would build a persona of an individual to define the company. What type of company? What do they do? What are their products and services? How do they make money? Do they do advertising? What's the leadership team like? What are the investors like? What's the board like? What's the company culture? I mean, on and on and on. How big is the company? Where is it located? Describe that ideal company. Create a persona and use that as an example to compare opportunities against. Start building a list of potential employers that come close to what you're seeking. So you probably know some businesses. You could look on TechCrunch. You could look on AngelList. There's a lot of places to look for potential employers. So create your list. Third is to activate your network, your professional network. So now that you know what your ideal next role should be and the type of employer you are seeking, now you're ready to talk with people. Now you can engage with people. Because when you tell people, hey, I'm looking for my next job, they're going to ask 
what you want. And I, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. It's important not to look desperate and panicked because that reduces your negotiation power later. You know, it depends on who you're talking with, but it is. So it's more like, Hey, I'm starting to think about my next move, my next opportunity. I'm not in any big rush. Remember you're, you're currently employed. This is a powerful position to be in. You have a job. You don't have to take any old job. You don't have to go out and beg with your hat in hand for some new position. So you can say, I'm starting to look around. I'm thinking about my next move. I'm going to say, well, what are you looking for? Well, my next move, I want to be a director. I really want to be a director of a team of about 35 people, you know, all kinds of designers and researchers. That's what I do. Probably a mid-sized company that's focused on e-commerce, you know, something like that. Be clear. However, you have to be careful about giving your trust. And I'm not saying your friends and connections might betray you. That's not what I'm saying. It's more like some people have a really hard time keeping a secret. And some people are really good at it. They play this game and this is a game that if you've been in the industry a long time and you're a professional, you know how to do this dance to say, oh, I see you have a position open. I know somebody might be a good fit. What are you looking for? They don't leak your name. They don't say you're desperately looking for a job. They don't broadcast on social media. Hey, Bob's looking for a job. Thanks. That's not good. So you want to make sure you're talking with people you can trust and they understand this delicate dance of how to make introductions and how to look for a job when you have a job and don't want to risk it. My last job search, and this has been a long time ago, uh, sometimes I forget, I left you know the corporate world over 12 years ago, uh, was in that last job four years. That was like 16 years ago was my last job search. Sometimes it feels like yesterday. It ended in uh, really nice competing offers from Yahoo and Google. So it was, do I go work at Yahoo? Do I go work at Google? And I had this whole process be pretty accelerated. This all happened in about a week, maybe a little over a week. Because I had carefully reached out to a select few people in my network. I intentionally talked with those who were in positions of influence. They could either directly hire me or they could put me in touch with the hiring managers. You know, they knew how to share that information or they were great connectors. So they, they usually knew about opportunities. People were always talking with them saying, Hey, do you know somebody who can do this? Happens a lot. They're connected to a nice network of people in your industry and hiring managers, and they could leverage their networks to help me. You know, they're the kind of folks that are like, I know five people. I'm going to make a call to those folks and they'll get back to you. So I was very careful about who I reached out to and I knew I could trust them to be professional that they would discreetly check around. They wouldn't reveal my job search strategy or status to the wrong people because <laughs> I didn't want the information to get back to my manager too soon. You don't want to play your hand too soon. Things get unpleasant at work. You know how that is. Number four, be intelligently visible. If you've been listening to this podcast, if you've been reading my Invincible Career uh, newsletter and articles. You can go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com and check out over 300 articles that I've written. But if you've been following my Invincible Career strategy, you know that you should always be visible online and in your industry. People should know who you are. People should know what you do. They should know what you're capable of achieving. They should know how amazing you are. So be visible in the right way. Write articles on your blog, Substack, Medium. Publish and post stuff on LinkedIn consistently. Be a guest on podcasts. That's a great way for people to discover you. Post smart tidbits, you know, little insights, things that will appeal to your professional network on social media. And when you do this consistently on a kind of regular schedule, it doesn't seem out of place when you start doing it. However, if you rarely are professionally active online and some people aren't, and all of a sudden there's this increase in the velocity of your engagement, 
People are like, what's going on? Why is Bob suddenly posting on LinkedIn multiple times a day? I think he's looking for a new job. Yeah. (laughs) This should just be something you're always doing. Because if you do this, you become an opportunity magnet. I talk about that all the time. Instead of, oh no, I need to find a job. It's going to be more like, oh, I'm getting people reaching out to me once or twice a week about positions. And I can say yes or no and decide if I want to have a conversation because they keep seeing you and they know who you are. And the final one, number five, be selective. I am not a fan of blasting your resume to hundreds of companies. I know people do this. I just think it's a horrible strategy. I also don't believe in applying for hundreds of open positions, hoping that someone's just going to fall in love with your resume. Unless you have a top 1% resume, that strategy isn't going to work for you. You will never win at that game. You will be at the bottom of the stack. And I wrote an article about this. You know, it's like, don't gamble with your career. Be smart about how you leverage your network to find great jobs. If you use that spray and pray approach to your job hunt, way too many people are going to know that you must be unhappy with your job. You're looking for your next move. Too many people know. And most industries are surprisingly small. You'd be amazed by how quickly news travels. The tech industry, it's big, but it's small. (laughs) People talk. People are highly connected. People reach out all the time. I have people reach out all the time and say, do you know this person? They're talking to us. What can you tell me about them? So the more people are talking, the more likely someone at your company will find out. And are you ready for that? Are you okay with all of your coworkers and your boss knowing you're looking for a new job? Like I said, that can get unpleasant. So instead, focus your efforts on a few ideal employers. Leverage your network to get warm introductions. And I linked an article to go read about that at newsletter.invinciblecareer.com. There is a way to leverage your network to get a job faster, just like I did. Do this well, and your whole interview process will be smooth, fast, and efficient. Again, the longer you're in the job search and interview mode, the more likely your employer will find out. So let's move into the don't do these things bucket. some of this advice should be obvious, but the mistakes people make when they're job hunting has surprised me. Uh, Number one, don't use company resources. Number two, don't broadcast. Number three, don't be quote, open to work. Number four, don't be interviewing when you should be working. And number five, don't count your chickens. Don't count those chickens until they're hatched. So let's talk about number one, don't use company resources. I mean, this advice should be obvious, but people break this rule all the time. Never look for your next job or conduct job interviews over Zoom or Hangouts using your corporate laptop or if you have a corporate phone or over the corporate network if you're on campus. Use your own devices on your own internet or internet at a cafe, wherever you are, and on your own time, not when you should be working. And speaking of company property, don't share your employer's intellectual property during a job interview. People break this rule all the time too. You probably signed a confidentiality agreement, which was buried somewhere in your employment agreement. Go check it. That means you can't share information that isn't publicly available. Those top secret projects you're working on, that product update that you're going to launch in six months, that's not public yet. You can't talk about it. You can't do that unless your employer gives you explicit approval to do so, right? Your legal team says, yep, you can share this. You can do a talk about this. But you're not going to ask for that because you're trying to keep your job search under wraps. You're not going to say, hey, can I talk about this project in my job interview with our competitor next week? (laughs) And I know this makes it harder to share your portfolio of work. Designers fall into this problem all the time. How do I share my projects? I can't put the mock-ups online. It makes it hard to talk about your latest project during an interview presentation, you know, in your deck. 
Because people are like, send your deck over. Now your deck has confidential information in it that you're sending to a, a maybe a competitor, another company. It's not worth the risk. I have to work through this all the time with my clients that I work with during their job searches and interview preparation. There are ways. You have to find ways to discuss your most recent work carefully without violating your employment agreement. So don't use company resources. Number two, don't broadcast. Now I'm fine with this modern practice that seems to be happening this year of sharing that you're part of a huge layoff. You know, a bunch of people on Netflix and Uber and gosh, so many places. There's been a ton of layoffs this year and people are putting on LinkedIn and Twitter. It's like, hey, I was part of that layoff. I'm one of the 5,000 people. So I'm looking for a new job. Here's what I do. It's okay. That's not your fault. And I don't think it looks bad to admit it. That's the company's fault. The company made the mistake. The company did not manage their profit and loss in their headcount planning. And it seems like one of the quickest ways to get a job lately has been to announce on social media that you were laid off. I linked an article about that. Sometimes people are creating these great spreadsheets on Airtable and putting stuff up online saying, here are all the people that lost their job at this company. Here are a bunch of designers and engineers and product managers and researchers and salespeople. Go talk to them. However, broadcasting that you're seeking a new job while you're still employed, (laughs) it's not a good idea, but I see people do it. It's crazy. The more you do it, the more likely your managers will find out. And there could be some bad side effects to that. They may not treat you so well when they think you're about ready to walk out the door. Not everybody has a great boss who understands that it's okay to interview. And finally, when does desperation ever look good? Desperation doesn't look good for dating. It doesn't look good for the job search. And more than one person has said, wow, you know, this whole process of searching for a job and interviewing is a lot like dating. Would you go online and say, wow, I'm desperately looking for someone to date me. Will someone please go out with me on Saturday night? Anyone, someone, would you want to ask that person out? I mean, it's, it's desperate. And the same thing for a job search. I've witnessed people begging for a job online. I'm really struggling. I can't find a job. I I need any old job. But that makes you wonder, it's like, what's wrong with this person? Why, why aren't they in demand? Why aren't they so good at what they do that people want to hire them and they're desperately asking for a job? And how weak is someone's network? If they have to broadcast to complete strangers on Twitter that they are desperately hunting for their next role. I don't think it looks good. There is a better way to do it. This whole networking approach is much better. Friend of a friend of a friend. Don't broadcast. Speaking of desperation, don't be open to work. LinkedIn has their open to work feature. You've probably seen it. It lets recruiters know you're looking for a new job. So your profile will show up supposedly in priority in searches when people are looking for people that match a specific query, like they're searching for product managers. So you get a green circle around your profile and there's a hashtag open to work. And if you go to your LinkedIn page, your profile page, your lovely profile photo has a big green circle thing around it. It says hashtag open to work. I see a lot of people using it. I think you can guess that this is a bad idea if you're currently employed. You don't want your boss or coworkers to see you're open to work. Now you can choose to restrict the settings. So you can say only recruiters can see the, my status instead of all LinkedIn members, right? You can say that. That way, your profile doesn't get that snazzy green circle. Boy, oh boy. Uh, but this can work against you. Again, I think it looks a bit desperate. As Robert Hellman explained in an article he wrote about it, the open to work indicator turns off some employers and recruiters because they prefer passive candidates. There is a bias for passive candidates. Passive means you have a job, you're not looking for work. For some reason, that makes you a heck of a lot more attractive than people who are active that are in the market. They've lost their job, they quit, they're desperately looking for a job. 
And you may receive more attention than you want from the wrong recruiters and the wrong employers that aren't a good fit for you. It's going to blast your inbox with a bunch of jobs that aren't right for you and it wastes your time. So I don't believe in it. Number four, don't interview when you should be working. When I used to work in a corporate office, I could hear people being interviewed for a job in our phone booths. We had these phone booths set tiny with a little desk and, and a phone and people go in and close the door. They were not soundproof. The walls were super thin. If you were having a call or a meeting, you could hear them talking and you recognize a job interview. Even in a conference room, sometimes people are kind of loud. <laughs> you, know? you can hear they're interviewing for a job. Maybe they put it on speakerphone. It's crazy. Now, smart folks took a break and they walked outside. They'd go out and walk the campus or go out and walk in the parking lot or go sit in their car to have their job search conversations. I mean, we still could see people look out the window and like, wow, why is Tony out in the parking lot on his phone again? We suspected what was going on, but at least no one could hear the conversation. Now the boundary between work and life is incredibly blurred because so many of us are working from home or working remotely. But you probably know when you should be working for your employer and when you are on your own time. So schedule work breaks for your job search activities. We have, most of us that do this have flexible schedules so we can work around it and make sure you're still giving your employer the time you should be, right? Don't let your activity and productivity drop off so much that they're like, what is going on? When you do get scheduled for a full day of interviews and it happens a full afternoon or a full day, don't use a sick day to take time off from work. It's not going to look good when you're supposed to be sick at home, but then someone runs into you at the grocery store or Starbucks after your job interview. So either you go to a job interview and you're driving home and drop off, stop off at Starbucks to get a drink and you run into a coworker or you finish your day of Zoom calls at home and you run out to get a drink and celebrate and relax. And wow, there's your coworkers. I thought you were sick. If you have a flexible work schedule, you can arrange your meetings and work time around the interview, right? So you can load up your morning of meetings and then have some time blocked off so that you can interview and you're still doing the work you should be. And if that's not going to work, you can use personal days and vacation days. You probably have PTO. So you can take a day off and go for an interview. That's what I did. And when people ask, it's okay to say, I'm taking a day off for personal business. You don't have to come up with all these wild and crazy fake excuses. I saw a website that was like 15 excuses for why you're interviewing. You know, I'm attending a funeral for my cousin's iguana. It just, it all is hard to remember. <laughs> it's easy to poke holes in. Just don't. And if someone presses for details, like, what are you doing? What do you mean? Just say, it's personal. Remember, <laughs> I'm taking a day off for personal business. I'd rather not talk about it. That's why they call it personal business. And then finally, number five, don't count your chickens. Don't count those chickens until they're hatched. Way too many employers are rescinding offers now. This is insane. I've never seen anything like it. The economic downturn, maybe it's a full-blown recession by this point in the U.S. at least, it's made the whole process of hunting for a job way more unpredictable than it ever has been before. So don't pull the trigger on your resignation. Don't give your two weeks notice until you know for sure you have that new job locked in. You know, that moment used to be when you signed the written offer and returned it to you know the recruiter or the hiring manager or maybe HR. Man, sadly, that's no longer the case. When an employer makes a job offer of at-will employment, they can rescind that offer for any reason at any time, including that period of time after you accept the offer, but before you begin work without legal consequence. So until you actually start work on that Monday or you're sitting in the chair in the office, they can rescind that offer, even if you signed it and returned it. There's no easy way to 100% avoid this. So I just suggest that you don't resign and give notice until you have a start date. And 
wait until it's exactly two weeks before that date. Hopefully if something goes sideways, it'll happen sooner. They're like, sorry, we thought we had the position, but they've closed all the racks and we lost our budget and they'll rescind it. And luckily you haven't given notice yet. So wait until the last minute to give your two weeks notice. I mean, there are no guarantees. It's crazy, but this should hopefully reduce the chance of your offer being rescinded after you've already quit your job. All right. That was the five do's, the five don'ts. I hope those were useful. I'm curious, are you looking for a new job this year? If you're listening to this, I'm curious, are you looking for a job? And I'd love to know, I did a poll that if you go to newsletter.invinciblecareer.com and you go to this article, I just want to see how many people are looking for a new job, but you feel like you have it under control. Things are going well. You are looking for a new job, but you think you might need some help. And I'd be happy to talk with you about that. I have a free introductory call where we can talk about what you're doing and I can see if I can make any suggestions that will make that easier for you. Or no, you're not looking for a job. You're staying where you are for various reasons. But even if you are going to stay, you should always be looking. You should always be looking for your next opportunity and be ready if something amazing comes along. You never have to say yes right? But you should be looking. Great stuff might come your way and you're like, wow, I would not have known about this company or job, but this is amazing. And if stuff that's coming your way isn't, then you're like, no, I'm happy where I am. You don't have to do anything about it. You should always be looking. But you want to be strategic about your approach to this hunt so you don't risk your job when you're currently employed. I mean, in a perfect world, your boss would understand that you're looking out for yourself. That's all you're doing. You're keeping an eye on the job market to see what the next step could be for your career. Should you stay where you are and keep advancing your career internally? Things are going well. Or look outside for something better. A boss should understand that. Heck, a great boss will help you assess opportunities and review offers to make sure you're, you're not getting ripped off. You're making a wise decision. Maybe they know the company. Maybe they know you should be getting more stock options. I've had that conversation with people and they felt free to come to me and they could. (laughs) There were times I said, that's not such a great offer. I'd go back and ask for more. Or do you know everything about that company? I know the leadership team. You might want to do some research to see what you're getting into. Or in one case, I was like, this is an amazing opportunity. I think you're not going to move up as quickly here in the company, but you're making a big jump there. This is too good for you to pass up. Stay in touch. Let's stay connected. But I keep telling people this, your network goes way beyond the walls of a company. I'm still friends with people I worked with 20 some years ago. Make good relationships, maintain those relationships. And that includes with your employees, your boss. We're all going to see each other again. We're all going to be in touch again. Take care of each other. But I know we don't live in a perfect world and sometimes you don't, you don't work for the best boss. Been there. So you got to take care of yourself. Look out for yourself. Be smart about your job search. Stay in contact with the right people in your network and explore opportunities in a way that won't jeopardize your future. I hope this was useful and helpful and um, you can use some of these tips, things to do, things to avoid as you're looking for your next job. And I wish you good luck with that. Until next time, I wish you the best of luck in becoming an, an opportunity magnet for the best things in life.